There are some princes who do princely things, but there are others who act in an unprince-like manner, like sitting in a compost heap covered in mud eggshells and old rice pudding. No prizes will be awarded for guessing into which of these categories you would place Prince Amir of Kinjan, the small, fat, exceedingly scruffy Afghan puppy known to the world as Watermess. The compost heap was Watermess's misery hole, he hid in it whenever he was miserable, and that particular morning, he was miserably miserable. The cat next door came along and tried to cheer him up. She was no help, but at least she kept him company. I don't know, said Watermess to no one in particular. Why do I always annoy the man of the house? I don't mean to. It's because you're stupid, said the cat cheerfully. You don't use your head like a cat does. When anyone in my house gets angry, I give them a present. I catch something, like a mouse, and lay it in front of them as a gift. Then they stroke me and open up a fresh tin of kitty chunks. It always works, because humans are like dogs. They're simple. <laughs> What a Mrs. Troubles began when his mother explained that he was old enough to learn how to bury bones, and she gave him one to practice with. Watermess dug a huge hole and buried his bone a good three feet down. He then dug another hole and buried a green Wellington boot he found by the back door. Warming to the task, he buried a, a new loaf of bread from the kitchen, a damp nightdress from the washing line, the man's old gardening gloves, and the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> When the man came out and saw all the holes, he was absolutely furious, and he shouted at Watermess, who just had to go under the stairs and have a sulk. But worse was to come, in the shape of Poppet. Poppet was a disgrace to the name Dog, a pampered, scented, spoiled, beribboned, deceitful, vicious, horrible little squirt of an animal who belonged to the man's aunt and sometimes came to stay. And to stay, Poppet came. What a mess hated little Poppet's visits. They meant that at any moment he would be grabbed, washed, shampooed, and have his coat pulled with a painful metal rake thing. And worst of all, he was expected to play with a frightful creature. Unfortunately, Poppet did not like the same games as What a mess. Watermess showed Poppet the game of tipping over the dustbin and sniffing through the kitchen waste. But Poppet soon became bored and wandered back to the house for a cuddle. <laughs> no, Watermess followed her, leaving a trail of rubbish through the hall. So he was shampooed again, and his coat was tugged at with a steel comb. 
<laughs> then Watermouse showed Poppet the game of chasing the cat next door up a tree. Poppy thought this was rather silly and went back to the house for her lunch. What a mess, meanwhile, felt that he'd climbed so far up the tree he couldn't get down. Actually, he'd only reached the lowest branch, but he felt very dizzy when he looked below him. poppy has got to go, said the cat. What a mess thought and thought about what they could do. The cat next door didn't think he was very bright. Well, now was his chance to show her that he was brighter than any old cat. Trouble was, he couldn't think of anything. So he decided to dig up his bone instead. Unfortunately, he'd forgotten where he'd buried it. As he was digging, he suddenly came upon the old pair of gardening gloves which the man had thrown away. They were damp and mouldy and some slugs and shiny things had set up home inside them. But there they were. Inspiration struck. What a mess had the best idea yet in his brief fat life. He remembered what the cat next door had said about giving humans a gift to turn away their wrath. He looked down at the wormy gloves. The man in the house has been so good to me, said Watermess loudly, so that Poppet could hear him clearly. I'm going to take his precious gardening gloves, which he thinks he has lost, up to the house. The family is having tea with Auntie, so I shall lay them on the table in front of him. He will be so grateful, I shall live in luxury forever, and in a flash, Poppet had snatched the gloves and was hurtling triumphantly towards the house and tea table as fast as her beastly little legs could carry her. What a mess and the cat waited. They imagined Poppet reaching the kitchen, skidding into the hall, running into the dining room and jumping up onto the tea table. The air was suddenly rent with cries of a small evil dog being attacked with a rolled up paper doily. Later that day, Poppet was sent home with the aunt. And Watermess was given the most enormous bone, an ox tail, his favourite. I shall eat it for supper, he thought. When supper time came, Watermess went into the kitchen, his mouth twitching at the thought of his oxtail. Could I have my bone, please? he asked his mother. I haven't got it, said his mother. Then where is it? You buried it. Don't you remember? You hid it in the garden this morning because you thought Poppet might come back and steal it. <laughs> A compass cheap, a kitchen mop, an old fur coat with a bird on top, a moving mess of unpleasantness, good grief, what a mess, eggshells, porridge, bell to rank, is this prince a mere of in jam, in toast and ketchup you'll never guess, oh no, what a mess, though he's not a pretty sight. Tries to do things right with a mother who's tall and slim. I wonder how she ever thought of him. A shock that's rough, he can't have.